Hello, hi everyone, welcome back. <laughs> I can see myself and I look really happy right now. Um, and that's because I am. I'm actually really excited to finally talk to you guys about something many of us struggle with, whether you're a student or you're preparing for the board. And some of us who've actually passed the board and are practicing but stay away from this topic, and that is, what's the difference between the ape hand, the claw hand, and the hand of benediction, and how do we tell them apart? Um, so today, uh, in this video, I want to just simplify the concept and these injuries in a way that is easy to understand and digest. I'm not going to go too much into the anatomy or the mechanics, but I want to provide a little more clarity uh, to the injuries that occur with the ulnar and the median nerve and uh, how you might be able to tell them apart. Okay, let's start with the ulnar nerve injury, uh, which will result in the claw hand. Arr, imagine me scratching you with the claw hand. <laughs> I'm really hyper today. <laughs> All right, so what is the claw hand? When you have an injury to the ulnar nerve, what you might get is hyperextension at the MCP joint and hyperflexion at the IP joint, okay? Do you see that? It's hyperextended here at MCP and hyperflexed here at the IP. And I'm only uh, doing that to the last two fingers because what do we know about the ulnar nerve? It innervates uh, these digits four to five, the last two fingers, right? And so uh, when you have an injury there, you'll get the claw hand, which is the position at rest. It's important to know this is a permanent fixed position. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the mechanics of how this happens. Now, I know I said I'm not going to go into the anatomy or mechanics. Just a little bit. Bear with me. Um, when an injury to the ulnar nerve occurs, what happens is that you lose innervation to the lumbricals and the interossea muscle. And this is kind of a big deal because the lumbricals are the intrinsic muscles of the hand that allow you to flex at the MCP, and they also work with the extensor digitorum here to extend the IP joint. You know it's confusing, just stay with me here. But lumbricals basically, I see them as sort of what keeps the extensor digitorum accountable because when you lose innervation to the lumbricals, the extensor digitorum, the one that's responsible for extending the fingers at the MCP, will go out of control. The extensor digitorum will be unopposed. And when that happens, when the lumbrical is no longer helping out, it'll hyperextend the MCP joint and it'll hyperflex the IP joint and that's why you get the claw hand so we can't lose our friend the lumbar goals okay uh, but that's what happens when you have an injury to the ulnar nerve is that the innervation to the lumbar goal is compromised and you get the claw hand versus the hand of benediction which look the same, but it's not the same because this sign is only an active sign that is demonstrated when you ask a patient with a high level median nerve injury to flex or make a fist and they're unable to do so because their flexor muscles are paralyzed. So quite different in mechanism with the ulnar claw hand where the uh, MCP joint is like hyperextended and it's going back like this versus the hand of benediction is an active sign where you're just trying to close the fist but you're unable to do that. Okay, so the flexor muscles, uh, the flexor superficialis, digitorum superficialis and the flexor pollis brevis, flexor pollicis uh, longus, those flexor muscles are paralyzed. And what do we know about the median nerve injury uh, and where it innervates? It's on this side, right? And so those are the involved fingers that will be uh, unable to flex when you ask a patient with a high level median nerve injury to make a fist. They stay up. And that's how you get the hand of benediction. This is not a position at rest. It's not a default position like the claw hand. This only shows when you ask them to close it. So quite different, although they look the same. 
Okay. Uh, another median nerve injury is the APAN, and that's because uh, of the impairment in the thenar muscles. And uh, so you will get the flattening of the thenar eminence, and uh, that will also result in the adduction of the thumb. You won't be able to abduct or pull away your thumb, and also the inability for thumb opposition, right? So bringing the fingers together. Um, that APAN is also a injury that recalls, re <coughs> results as a median nerve injury. I feel a cough attack about to come on. Mm. Okay, uh, similar to the ulnar claw hand, the ape hand that you get with the median nerve injury is also a position at rest. So this is a default position here. Okay, so the only position that is an active sign is the hand of benediction. All right, so I hope that was helpful um, and help clarify the confusion surrounding the hand of benediction and the claw hand. Okay, I'm getting a cough attack, so that's it for today. Have a nice rest of your day, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!